Friends, we move to lecture two in this series of uh, military law lectures. Uh, we would uh, see what are the special features of military law and uh, that would help us understand the subsequent lectures once we are aware of the special characteristics. Uh, you should also bear it in mind as to how these series of lectures are going to help you uh, in your career choice. Uh, it is to be appreciated that military law is a special branch of law. And to that extent, this certificate course will impart the requisite knowledge base and equip you with the requisite skills of this law and it would uh, prepare you for employment and practice opportunities. Military law is also commonly known as armed forces law or the defense forces law since it deals with the, the three wings of the armed forces. Why are the armed forces there? The primary role of the armed forces is the defense of the country and thereby it defends the unity and integrity of the nation. The three wings of the military are Army, Navy and Air Force. Closely linked to this are the Assam Rifles as far as Army is concerned and Coast Guard in the context of uh, maritime defense of the nation. This session aim is to provide necessary knowledge base to understand the military law provisions. You had seen in the first lecture that uh, there are officers, then there are junior commission officers and persons below officer rank. Uh, it is laid down in the regulations for the army defense services regulations uh, as regards responsibility of an officer is that he is at all times responsible for ensuring that good order and discipline of the service are maintained and the rules and instructions are complied with. Now, the two limbs are interrelated. If the rules and instructions would be duly complied with in letter and spirit, then the good order and discipline of the service would by itself be maintained. A major role in this regard is uh, performed by the Judge Advocate General, who is the legal advisor to the service head, and his setup is called the JAG Department. Uh, it is the function of the Judge Advocate General to advise the Chief of the Army Staff and Commanders at different levels with regard to the interpretation of rules. The basic statutory framework is a basis or relied uh, is the basis of and relies upon the Army Act, Air Force Act and the Navy Act. And uh, these were the initial legislations and followed in 2007 by the Armed Forces Tribunal Act. Military law is a special law and cases relating to violation of military code are decided within the military by the military itself and the usual system of district courts and session courts, magistrate, etc. They do not come into the picture. In military law, there is a considerable emphasis on discipline. It is so because the very nature of military service calls for a high degree of discipline. The soldiers, for them, the discipline is the basic criteria. And you may have heard that the difference between the decoys and the soldier is while both of them can use arms, the military, the soldiers have discipline. A soldier as part of his basic training inculcates a habit of implicit obedience 
two orders. Certain basic features of military service, there is a universal jurisdiction. It means that uh, the direction, the control of the military over a soldier is not limited to within the geographical confines of India, wherever the soldier may be and may travel by land, sea or air, he would remain subject to military law. And then the second aspect, there is voluntary induction. Uh, that signifies that uh, a candidate who is desirous of entering army voluntarily goes and signs up for the process of recruitment by which uh, his uh, suitability for induction in the army is seen. Having entered the armed forces, a soldier has no right to resign. He has only a right to put up an application to proceed on discharge. Uh, there is no uh, separation from service at will. Uh, the Hat Judiciary has no power of superintendence over court marshals, except in the limited way relating to the Armed Forces Tribunal. Then military law is a self-contained code and the Army Act and the rules framed thereunder contain the procedure by which the law is administered. Women are allowed to serve only in certain portions of the armed forces, uh, in the, mainly in the officer cadre. The variation may be for the military nursing service, uh, which is an auxiliary force. And uh, in the core of military police, women are now being taken in the uh, persons below officer rank PBOR cadre. And lastly, in uh, so far as induction in the military is concerned, uh, there is no quota or reservation. Court martial is a system by which uh, discipline is enforced and uh, infraction, deviation, violation of military code is dealt, may be dealt by a process of court martial. It is a system associated with the military service wherein a single uh, officer or a group of officers they decide a case of law where the military law has been infringed and it may be by a single accused or a group of accused in which case a joint trial may be resorted to uh, defense forces have an all india character and uh, the service is not confined or restricted to only one state or a range zone and a soldier may be posted and may move with his unit to anywhere within India or beyond. Uh, the term extra territorial jurisdiction also gets associated with the military law and uh, there is a legal provision under the military law in the Army Act that the soldier is law bound to go and serve anywhere on land, sea, or air. The rank structure follows the shape of a pyramid and that is how the command structure is and span of control uh, that there is a chief of army staff below, below him are the geographical army commanders, then corps commanders, division commanders, area commanders, brigade commanders and a unit commander and so on and therefore it follows a structure of a pyramid. The entire uh, manpower, human power of the armed forces can be divided in three categories, officers, junior commission officers and persons below officer rank and uh, this is how the entire army is structured and organized. Uh, the ranks amongst the officer cadre are as there in a slide in front of you, starts with a lieutenant, captain, major, lieutenant colonel, colonel, brigadier, major general, lieutenant general, and finally a general. And there is only one general for the entire army, and he is the commanding officer of the regular army. 
to distinguish and recognize uh, the JCOs, they on as a part of their uniform on their shoulders bear these badges of rank and in front of you you can see a star denotes the rank of a Naib Subedar, two stars are a Subedar and uh, an Ashoka uh, pillar is uh, what is for a Subedar major. Various ranks under the category of other ranks or persons below officer rank are starting at uh, to begin with soldier uh, in infantry he may be known as rifleman and artillery gunner in corps of engineers a sapper like that so they are all soldiers uh, the next appointment he gets is of a lance nayak on promotion then there is a nayak and finally a havaldar the entire army is divided into various regiment and corps and this um, apart from the division for operational purposes for functional benefit also has a relationship with the law and discipline that a soldier who say is in, uh, enrolled in infantry on his own cannot go and then try for uh, re-enrollment in say army aviation corps or in corps of signals so some of the major corps and regiments are there on uh, the slide in front of you, Infantry, Artillery, Corps of Engineers, then Armored Corps, which has uh, the tanks and mechanized uh, vehicles, Army Aviation Corps, Corps of Signals, Mechanized Infantry, Air Defense Artillery, and the Army Service Corps. Apart from that, uh, the other regiments and corps include AOC, Army Ordnance Corps, Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, Intelligence Corps, Army Education Corps, Remounts and Veterinary Corps, Army Tentry Corps, and uh, Army Postal Corps. The rank structure you have seen in so far as units and formations are concerned, they are divided into companies, uh, battery or a squadron, batteries in case of artillery, Instead of company, they call it a battery. In Armored Corps, it is called a squadron. Then there is a unit, which may be known as a regiment or battalion. Uh, upwards, brigade, then division, which are part of a corps, then command, and finally, army. Uh, that was uh, which you just saw, the structure in field formations. Uh, in during the operations or on border areas whereas static units which are uh, composed of uh, workshops depots etc they have a unit then the station headquarters sub area an area command and army so you would see that finally at the level of command and army they integrate and uh, there is only the command and army structure that goes to the apex. Having seen these special characteristics of uh, the military and military law, uh, you would uh, be able to understand that the military has been organized in a manner uh, which would facilitate its command and employment in war because uh, even during peacetime the military prepares for war which may break out at any short notice uh, the intentions of the enemy may not be known and uh, military law therefore has been designed as a self-contained code it is capable of meeting the twin objectives and what are these two objectives one is ensure proper discharge of duties by the proper uh, by the personnel of the armed forces they should be able to function properly to contribute to the war effort and secondly they do that by maintaining the high standard of discipline that brings me to the end of this lecture thank you